Hello all YouTubers, I'm Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into the tropical discussion for October 10th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from Dweller Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest Dweller Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization so please watch the whole video it really does help out my channel a lot and also please give this video a like and share this with your friends thank you now let's get on with today's video and you've guessed it we have another tropical disturbance in the eastern atlantic here and 20% chance of development. It's been in there for a while. We're going to be keeping an eye on it today because it's heading into a pretty favorable environment for development. And I did cover the remnants of Delta in my previous upload for today. So consider checking that out after this video if you have not already. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we have a tro tropical disturbance. It's just a disturbance for now. A cluster of thunderstorms in the tropical Atlantic. Uh, but these tropical waves could mean a potential tropical storm could come out of this. Um, it's a westward moving tropical wave. We're seeing some disorganized showers and storms over the central tropical Atlantic. We'll be keeping an eye on this and another tropical wave come off Africa as well, as well as something hovering near Puerto Rico. You'll see it uh, further on the satellite imagery. But these clusters are tropical waves. These tropical waves that come off the coast of Africa, move through the Atlantic, could spawn in some potential tropical storms here. We have to keep our eye on very closely. So it's slow development of the system. It's not too rapidly developing. I mean, you really saw it's been sitting at 20% development chances for a while now. Uh, because he's development uh, possible later this weekend, maybe even early next week. This is moving at 15 to 20 miles per hour, so this is you know moving pretty quickly. A little a little quicker than usually tropical storm. Usually tropical storms move about 10 to 15 miles an hour. This is moving closer to 15 to 20. So, but what when and if this does, this does become an invest, we'll be able to track it further, show some more maps on it. So hopefully, so ring the bell notifications if you want to stay up to date. If this does potentially become an invest, all right. Upper level upper level winds though could be. Unfavorable for further development by the middle of next week. But keep in mind, it is only Saturday, so this still has Sunday, Monday, probably even Tuesday, late Tuesday could be pushing a little bit. It's got a few days to develop, and over the next five days, this is projected to track maybe towards the windward and leeward islands. So keep an eye out there on you guys. Looking at the satellite imagery, I want to zoom out a little bit to show you all the stuff, all the tropical systems that I'm watching personally. Uh, first of all, we have Delta, obviously. There's a little high spinning around there, so we've got Delta moving this way, and a lot of its cloud covers rotating right around that upper level high. And that's also and that also means there's that cluster of storms I was talking about right over Puerto Rico. If that drops into the Caribbean, we, we could be watching that as well. And it could rotate right around the high and come right back here in the Caribbean. So that's a cluster of storms we'll have to watch, but not not um, highlighted by the National Hurricane Center yet. Something else that has been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center that I'm keeping watch over is something right there, maybe potential tropical wave or potential tropical storm uh, near the Yucatan yet again. All right, it looks like it's got a lot of um, counterclockwise flow or counterclockwise spin. We got clusters, a few clusters of storms on Africa, but here is the one we're going to primarily focus on today. The one identified by Natural Hurricane Center, and the storm seems to be moving in a more northward direction, so that could be the result of slight, some maybe southern shear. Um, the storm could actually be moving, it is actually moving a little bit of a north, a more west-northwest direction as well. So those are the two storms we are watching. Now, Sea surface temperature anomalies in this particular region. If we look at the storm, as of 2 p.m., we're going to get an update on, at 8 p.m. Probably much will probably not change, but keep an eye on the community tab. If, some, if something extraordinary does change with this system, at 8 p.m., I will be updating you guys in the community tab on that. All right, but this is sitting at about 10 degrees. Well, by the way, updates come at 2 p.m., 8 p.m., 2 a.m., and 8 a.m. So it's basically a few updates a day, really, and we get one at 2 and 8 o'clock each day, Eastern Time. Um, this thing about exactly like it's literally sitting exactly almost on 40 degrees west and 10 degrees north, which we should make it really easy to identify here to see where it sits on our on our ocean graph. So 40 degrees north or 40 degrees west, 10 degrees north is basically right here. So it is sitting in some above average water and will be for its entire lifespan, or at least for the next few days, I should say. So ocean water is something that's on the storm system side, even if the water was average. All right, waters in this region are getting, water temperatures are getting pretty warm now, probably peaking, if not, maybe starting to fall a little bit, but ocean water is above average. You saw what Delta went through, below average waters in the Gulf, and it's still got a chance to strengthen, even though the Gulf is very warm all by itself. 
Yeah, have ocean water temperatures 28, 29 Celsius, which is pushing like mid upper 80s. If this does take a little bit more of a suddenly track because the storm is sitting right about here right now. If this takes a little bit more of a suddenly track, it could touch some of those 29 close to 30 degrees Celsius waters before it makes a bed north. However, if it makes a slightly more northern track in like a motion like this, as opposed to something like this, it may only graze the 28, 29 as opposed to 29, 30. And it does make a difference. All right, more up earth heat content, more warmer water, the better for the storm system. So all the, it really actually does depend on that track. All right, so let's close this out. And here we, here we have the ensemble based probability. Don't really see too much picking up on it, but the models are picking up on a 20% chance of development. If we look at this map, FNMOC, German, European model, they do pick up a potential 20 or so percent chance of development, just like the National Hurricane Center. But maybe they're actually pinpointing 40 to 50% chance of development, maybe something coming off the coast of Africa. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. All these potential tropical storms, potential tropical cyclones, we do have to watch. All right, one thing that's on the storm side as well, there is no dry air really. Here's the storm where it is right now, the one that we're watching today. There's very, very low amount of dry air, really not gonna impact the system that just went west. But other than that, really nothing. Northwestern Gulf, we got some dry air behind Delta. Um, we're actually starting to see though, another surge of dry air moving right in this motion here, coming off the coast of Africa. So could that put a halt on activity? Who knows? I'm sure, especially those of you that live in the Southeast and the Gulf Coast and even the Mid-Atlantic, I'm sure after you guys are going through Delta, I'm sure you don't want another tropical system. I really, I don't either. I, it's just, you know, my job to, to report on it for you guys, to keep you guys weather aware. Here's the tropical system for Puerto Rico that could drop into the Caribbean. Really no dryer in the Caribbean except for just south of Jamaica. Uh, but again, it's a very minor patch of dry air. The more serious dry air, which could hurt the system, is out by Africa. And there's really no storms developing out there right now as of latest. So we have Delta right here. There's all the cyclonic energy with that. Again, as I said in my last video with Delta, energy values are still pretty high. So keep an eye out for some gusty winds coming out of Delta as well as some heavy rainfall. Here we have our storm system to watch. It's got some decent, decently high on the on the cyclonic vorticity signature, maybe closer to 40 or 50, but it's not too horrible. Right, again, this is this this system is in its pre-developed it's developing stage. All right, it's it's getting there. It's like learning new things, trying to develop. And as of right now, tropical intensity index by the lesser Antilles and the windward and leeward islands, it looks like high favorable development conditions. So things are looking good so far. Cyclonic heat potential, not too high, but it's right in the middle. If this doesn't make it into the Caribbean further, obviously it's how Delta rapidly intensified. We got these <laughs> very high upper ocean heat content values. Let's put it that way. All right, but still moderate upper ocean heat content uh, for where the storm is right now. We're going to get into the models very shortly here, but first, let's take a look at that wind shear. How is the shear doing? Thankfully, that's another reason why a southern track would help this system. It's storm system currently is sitting right here. I marked this black dot. Hopefully, you guys can see it. Actually, let's make it a lime green. You probably can see it. I'll make it like a lime green X. So, you can see it right there. So, that's where storm system is currently located. If this were to take a more northerly track, all right, it would go into some slightly higher shear just to its north. with some shear hovering to the north of it. But if it takes a more southerly track and then bends back up, it'll move into this pocket of very, very low shear. And this is its forecast track. So, some very light shear below at or below 15 knots would really help the storm system, especially since some more shear is out there by Puerto Rico. More, I said more, but not, it's not significant shear by Puerto Rico right now, but we could see more wind shear rotating in from Delta around the upper level high. So you could see eventually upper level winds will become unfavorable. But for right now, we could see this thing start to get its act together a bit more as it moves into some warmer ocean environments. All right, so GFS model. Where are they predicting this thing could go? All right, if you look, a surface level actually does develop, according to them, by Monday morning. All right, very high pressure, 1011, compared to post-tropical delta, which is like 998 or so, which is very good for a storm system as it is right now. There's it hitting the lesser Antilles. Like, like all these systems, nonetheless, regardless of development, there will be rain for the uh, Leeward and Windward Islands, for Puerto Rico even, if it gets that far, and also Hispaniola and Dominican Republic, regardless of any development. Cyclonic vorticity signatures, how are those looking? Well, pretty good. Until it hits the lesser Antilles, where the GFS really kind of calls for weakening. But there's something else much more interesting coming in behind that. So that could be something to watch. These tropical waves could turn into potential tropical storms. But there's your development right about there. It gives some peak cyclonic strength by, like I said, right when that surface low develops Monday morning. Then by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it really doesn't look too good.
So let's take a look at the surface winds with the GFS model. Um, I'm seeing a lot of dark blue so far. I don't see any greens. So if we were to see any green, that would mean, and this is the full resolution, so that's why I like to look at this better. Um, no green, so no travel store for the GFS model, at least that's what they're calling for for now. But right when that surface load develops, it gets a bit more energy, like right there Monday morning, Monday afternoon. I think Monday could be the best day for it to develop according to the GFS model. So that could be the best day for it. Now, gem models call for something a bit different. And I know as I looked at these systems throughout this year, I feel like the gem model has underplayed tropical, or tropical disturbances at first. I thought they've downplayed them a lot, but you're going to see something a bit more interesting according to the gem model, as I show you right now. All right, so here's a gem model. And as you can see, on the precipitation loop, does not look like much. I can agree with you guys there. All right, there's some rain. We got some scattered showers and storms coming into the Lesser Antilles and the Leeward and Windward Islands. All right, and then it kind of moves into Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and not really doing too much. We're going to take a look at the wind. All right, and that may not support what I'm saying here, but if you look at the cyclonic vortex signature, you'll see something a lot different. All right, so there's your like pocket of strong air winds, quote unquote. All right, maybe 20, or maybe like 30 or 35 miles an hour. That's that pocket of dark blue, some str slightly stronger winds moves into the Lesser Antilles. Like I said, I mean, this area has been hit by a decent amount of travel systems this year as well. We had a lot of systems pass by, so they really, they really don't need another system either. But look at the cyclone vorticity signature right there. Doesn't look like much, but it's a nice circular, it's an organized looking system, bright up medium on the cyclone vorticity scale. And there you go, a decently sized or a decently strength storm it's really strong moving right through these southern windward islands and even through the leeward islands as well and then that batch of energy could slam into puerto rico maybe even hispaniola i shouldn't say slam because it's not going to be too strong of a system as of now but it just has become an invest we'll have to investigate this even further obviously that's what invest means so thank guys for watching today's video drop a like if you enjoyed i am the weather dude signing off till next time i will catch you guys in the next video